Hello everyone, this is Jozef Nagy here and today I would like to talk to you about OpenFoam's solvers, at least the most commonly used OpenFoam solvers. Now, why do I want to talk about this? Because maybe you are starting with OpenFoam and you take a look at the features or at the models of OpenFoam and you think to yourself, yes, this is great, this is what I want to utilize in my CFD project, but I don't have the time to learn everything. And where should I concentrate on? And then you might go into your OpenFoam installation, into application and take a look at the solvers. And there is what you see. This is what you would find in your OpenFoam folder under application and solvers. Uh, this list of folders and then you go through and then you take a look at basic and combustion compressible okay and then you go further and huh what electromagnetics and financial what i'm not working at a bank what am i supposed to do with that so where should i concentrate on in order to answer this question let's just start with a broader picture what is actually open form open form is not one software like you would expect it from for example with microsoft word where you click on an icon and then you get um, user interface and then you can click around OpenFOAM is rather a collection of libraries and applications. And OpenFOAM is based on a namespace called Foam. And if you don't know what the namespace is, it is kind of a dialect of the programming language C++. It is a wide collection of libraries and applications. And when I say libraries, then I really mean, for example, models, like, for example, all the turbulence models that you can utilize in OpenFOAM and of applications, applications for pre-processing, for actual CFD simulations, and for post-processing. For example, set fields for pre-processing and interfoam for CFD, for multi-phase CFD simulations, and reconstruct par for post-processing. We are not interested in libraries today. We are not interested in pre-processing applications or post-processing applications. We are interested in applications for CFD simulations. And solvers are applications for CFD simulations. Exactly that. And these solvers are organized topic-wise and there are topics which are not so typical top CFD topics, for example, financial or electromagnetics. And there are CFD topics like combustion, heat transfer, incompressible, multiphase, for example. And here I want to concentrate on the most common CFD topics like uh, heat transfer, incompressible flows and multiphase flows. Now you might argue, yes, but combustion and or compressible flows are also important. And yes, they are important. That's not what I want to say here. But if you want, if you go to a um, conference or the, the, the open form workshop, usually most of the talks include heat transfer, incompressible laminar, turbulent flows and multiphase flows. So, if you are interested in, for example, combustion modeling, then just go along with the video and then do the same what I do now for heat transfer, incompressible or multiphase, do the same for compressible or combustion or, for example, Lagrangian particle modeling. So uh, I just want to uh, spend exactly for that reason for the not so common CFD topics or the non CFD topics, just go into that folder that you're interested in. For example, you're interested in Lagrangian particles and the Lagrangian passive transport of a particle cloud, then just go into application solvers and then into Lagrangian and then go through all the folders. Go into the folders, for example, into ICO, uncoupled, kinematic, parcel flume and open up the .c file. And there will always be a description, an official description of that solver. For example, here that this solver is a transient solver for the passive transport of a single kinematic particle cloud with a pre-calculated fixed velocity field. And yes, you will find it also online, but you don't have to Google that. You can just go into your OpenFOAM installation and then just read, go through all the available solvers and take a look at the description. And this is what I will go through with you for the more common solvers. The most common solvers are, as I mentioned, heat transfer, incompressible, and multiphase. And I do not want to forget also the basic solvers because they can be very handy for certain applications. 
And usually what you have in such one such topic, for example, incompressible, that you have a couple of general solvers and there are derivatives of those general solvers. So if you watched my multiphase simulation project, there you then you might be familiar with the interform solver, which solves the process of a multiphase flow with a static mesh and there is a derivative of that interfoam solver which is called interdime foam which we utilize in that project and this is the same exact solver except that it can also handle dynamic mesh motion. A lot of solvers in OpenFoam have these dynamic mesh derivative solvers. So I'm not, not going to even talk about those because a lot of the solvers have them, the dime foam version. Let's start with the basic solvers. For example, Laplacian foam, which is, can be very, very handy for the calculation of the thermal diffusion in solids. A lot of times if you go to conferences or workshops, you see talks where people calculate their CF, or do the CFD simulations in open foam, and then they go to Comsol or Abacus, for example, for thermal simulations in solids. And then I ask myself, why do they do that? Because you can also do the thermal diffusion fusion in a solid also in open foam. Just create the mesh of your solid and then set up your boundaries, your temperature boundaries, and then run Laplacian foam. You can do that in open foam, no problem. Then there is potential foam which solves a potential flow and this is a very handy for an initial field of simulations, especially steady state simulations and uh, because having a certain already predefined profile of your vessel velocity is always better than just assuming the velocity to be zero 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 in all your cells. And there is scalar trans transport foam. Some of you might know this solver. This sol uh, solves the scalar transport on a fixed velocity field. So you can calculate the diffusion and convection of the temperature. And if you can assume that your velocity field will not change given by the temperature difference that you want to take a look at, or you have a species transport and you know that your velocity field will be steady stationary, then you just calculate once your velocity field and then you can use that to take a look at the temperature differences if you switch on some temperature at certain locations and what's the evaluation of the temperature or the species transport because I know you can do that as a function object for a piezo foam simulation for example but then you have to solve all the full Navier-Stokes equations. If you only have one fixed velocity field then this is a perfect solver for your application. So in certain conditions, these basic solvers can be very, very useful. And they are much, much faster than if solving the full Navier-Stokes equations. Then, if you're interested, for example, in heat transfer, then you might go for buoyant pimple or buoyant simple foam. And this is the transient and the steady state version of that solver. And both of them solve the flow of a buoyant, so they solve the buoyant turbulent flow of a compressible fluid, so single phase flow for ventilation and heat transfer. And there are derivatives of those solvers with the Businesk approximation. An even more common solver is CHT multi-region foam, or the simple version, so the steady state version, CHT multi-region simple foam for the buoyant turbulent fluid flow and the solid heat conduction. So there you don't only solve the fluid flow, but you also solve uh, the heat conduction in solid regions and the heat transfer between the fluid and the solid. And then there is also thermofoam, which is which solves an energy transport with actual thermodynamics on a frozen flow field. So this is very simple to scalar transport from, from before, with the difference that this is an energy equation and thermodynamics. Then another very important topic is in, in steady state incompressible flow laminar and turbulent. So the first um, solvers are, for example, add joint shape optimization foam. And I do not want to comment on this solver because I've never used it. It so, uh, optimizes, for example, a duct shape. 
And then there is boundary flow foam and this so uh, generates boundary layer conditions for inlet simulations for turbulent flows. Then there is icofoam and maybe you know already icofoam. It's, uh, it is uh, the, the, the simplest Navier-Stokes solver for incompressible laminar flow of Newtonian fluids and there is also the non-Newtonian version of that. And you might know that if you started programming with OpenFoam because this is the solver where you can very easily see the structure of OpenFoam solvers. And then we come to the flagships of OpenFoam, PimpleFoam and PisoFoam and the data derivatives. And they solve the incompressible turbulent and also laminar flow of a uh, single phase uh, fluid using the pimple and the piezo algorithm. And the differences for the pimple, you can also use larger time steps to go over a Kuro number of one. But I would be very cautious uh, with that. Sometimes that works, but sometimes you'll have to still be below a Kuro number of one. And you might ask to yourself, okay, what's the difference between pimple foam and piezo foam? And actually they are the same, except for one difference. And this difference is a big one. It's a numerical difference in the pressure velocity coupling. But if you're just only interested in, in a flow and not in the numerics, then both of them will work for a single phase incompressible and turbulent or laminar flow. Then you have shallow water foam. So if you're uh, dealing with river modeling, you can solve the shallow water equations with that solver. And then you have simple foam, which is also a flagship of open foam for incompressible turbulent flows using a simple algorithm. So they are the steady, it, simple foam is the steady state version of pimple or piezo foam. And then we come to the multiphase models, multiphase solvers. First, the cavitating foam, where you can solve cavitation, so phase transfer given by pressure differences. Then, drift flux foam, which solves the flow of two incompressible fluids using the mixture approach with the drift flux approximation. But I've never used this solver, so I cannot comment on this solver. And then we have another flagship of open foam, interfoam and interfoam derivatives, which solves two incompressible isothermal immiscible fluids using a volume of fluid phase fraction based interface capturing approach. So most people, if they want to solve a multi-phase flow in open form, they go for interform. Unless you know that you cannot use interform, then you will use another solver. But in most cases, you will see interform simulations at conferences or the workshop. And then there is compressible interform, which can be considered to be a derivative of interform, but with a big difference that it solves two compressible fluids and non-isothermal fluids. And this is a very important difference because you have an additional temperature equation in compressible interfoam. So you can see compressible interfoam as a derivative of interfoam, but there is a type temperature or so a certain kind of energy equation included. And there is potential free surface forms. So for, this, uh, for the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations, with the inclusion of a wave height field. And there is two liquid mixing foam with, for the mixing of two incompressible fluids and another important and common solver, two-phase Euler foam and the derivatives for the solution of two compressible fluid phases with one phase dispersed. And this is the po very important point. So one phase is dispersed, for example, gas bubbles in a liquid. So if you're calculating a bubble column, then it's very difficult to solve the, the process with interform because you need a very, very high resolution of a mesh. And what people usually do, they go for two-phase Euler foam. So in conclusion, if you come from the other side, not from the solver side, but from the problem setting, so if you want to solve, for example, a single phase laminar or turbulent flow, then you will go for most probably piezo foam or pimple foam. If you're interested in a transient process, if you're interested in a steady state process, you will use simple foam. And if you're interested in multi-phase flows, most probably you will use interfoam. 
In certain cases, you might consider two-phase Euler foam if you know that interfoam needs a, a very high resolution to capture your phenomena. If you're interested in heat transfer, you will go for buoyant pimple foam or buoyant simple foam, the transient and the steady state version. And if you're also interested in the heat diffusion in a solid and the heat transfer between the th your, uh, fluid and the solid, then you will use CHD multi-region foam or the steady state version, the simple version. And don't forget about the basic solvers like Laplace foam or scalar transport foam because they can be very handy. So if you want to know in which direction you want to go, don't forget that open foam is, ba is based on a namespace which is a dialect of C++ and it is a collection of libraries and applications and today we took a look at the applications for CFD simulations. And if you are interested not in the, these common topics, incompressible heat transfer or multiphase, but for example compressible flows, then do the same. Select your field so you know, for example, compressible flows or any other kind of flows, and then go in that folder in your OpenFOAM installation in applications and solvers. Go into that, that folder and go through all subfolders and open the .c file and then take a look at the description and maybe even take a look at the derivatives of the of general solvers. Maybe for your application a derivative solver is more suitable. And then in the next step go for the tutorials of OpenFOAM in your OpenFOAM installation in tutorials. A lot of solvers come with tutorials. Go into them and take a look at what you need for setup and what's the difference between more general solvers and the derivatives. And yes, they are not commented, so maybe it's a good idea to check out, for example, but, uh, videos, commented uh, tutorials on YouTube, for example, on my channel. Or also take a look at the video that I uploaded on the new tutorial collection that we set up as a joint project between the community and OpenCFD. So you can start your own CFD project because there are a lot of tutorials and you might find one on your solver. If you like these kinds of uh, videos, then please like, uh, comment and subscribe on my channel. I hope that you liked this video and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and listening. And I hope to see you next time.